I don't know. I don't know why um, Eat, Pray, Love has had the impact that it's had. Um, I also don't know. I mean, I've written books before this, you know, um, and they sold upwards of dozens of copies each. <laughs> you know, I don't know how that happened. Um, if I knew how that happened, I would do it again, um, or I would have been doing it all along. You know, um, it's it, it, there's a there's a certain randomness in in the way that my questions, for some reason, about my life intersected, dovetailed, with questions that apparently a lot of other people, women in particular, um, at this moment in history were asking about their lives. One possible answer is, I, I mean, I do feel like I'm a pretty representative um, example of my culture. You know, um, I'm, I'm pretty representative 21st century uh, middle-aged American woman in the way that uh, I've been educated, in the way that, um, you know, in, in the things that I've been led to believe that my life should feel like, um, in the disappointments that I experience when my life doesn't feel like that, um, the, the, the particular kinds of questions that, that haunt me, um, the things that I want and wonder about. I, you know, I don't think I have any particularly special, uh, I, I think I feel that stuff the same way that certainly everybody I know <laughs> feels those things. Um, you know, and again, pointing to the question of privilege because of the fact that I'm a writer, um, I have, and, and because of the fact that I've been able to build a career as a writer and sort of organize my time in a certain way, I have access to a lot more time than other people might have to think about those things. Um, I was able to say, I'm going to take one entire year and do literally nothing every minute of the day except think about all these questions. Um, I remember before I left on the trip, this friend of mine who's a mother of two, she has a doctorate, she's you know at home right now with her kids, but certainly has this ferociously intelligent mind. You know, she just sat me down and said, take us with you. You know, all of us who are asking these same things but are staying here, you know, with our families, with our kids, with our work. Um, you know, take us with you and, and ask the questions that we would ask and do the work that we would want to do if we could. You know, so I think I felt a great obligation to do that while I was traveling in a way I didn't forget that and 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 I would ask myself what would Cree, Susan, Cat want to know if they were here um, and, and sort of fill that in and then try to answer those questions on the page. Um, and I wrote the book very directly as a letter to one specific person. I wrote the book to my friend Darcy Stanky, who's a, a wonderful novelist and a memoirist and who is also on a, a very different sort of spiritual path, uh, a, a spiritual path, but a different one for me. She's um, a, a student of Christianity, but is also this hipster who lives in Brooklyn, single mom. Um, and, and we've had a long ranging conversation over the years about marriage, about divinity, about autonomy, about all these questions that you know, are foremost in our minds, and this book became a kind of extended letter to her. And the one thing that I've heard people to say when they read the book or when they respond to it in this way, and certainly not everybody has responded to it positively, by the way, you know, but the people who do say, I feel as though we were having a conversation. I feel as though you were talking directly to me. Um, because in a sense I, I was, I was talking directly to one person who is also a very representative 21st century American women, and um, and so maybe that's it. You know, maybe it just feels like, you know, we're knee to knee with like a cup of coffee between us, trying to figure out this stuff together, um, which maybe we need right now. Yeah, well, I think that going and traveling very literally to very literal places is about as much the opposite of like the Facebook blogosphere virtual, <laughs> you know, at, you know, um, avatarish world that, that, that so many people live in, or at least that I, I hear so many people live in. Um, I, I'm not sure whether people live in that world quite as much as, as commentators like to imagine that they do. Um, I, you know, I, I still feel like people have a lot of inter <laughs> interpersonal um, contact and, and communication with each other in really real ways. Although, there's nothing like actually going to Naples and eating a pizza, you know, um, to, to, to make you feel like you're really in a place doing a thing. Um, but I don't think that, I'm not sure that the dream of pilgrimage is new, you know. Um, I, I think it's hardwired into us in some way, the yearning um, to 
to step aside from the fold and the clan and go off into the desert, the mountain, the cave, um, the holy city, the, you know, whatever, you know, whatever the, the, the sort of dream of distance is. Um, it, that's something that is part of every single human society on earth. Um, and I think the way I did it was just a way that was reflective of you know, the kind of person that I am and the kind of culture that I grew up in and, and the kind of stuff that I was yearning for and wanting. Um, but, you know, I, I always found it really interesting, you know, you go back and you read these accounts um, in Roman histories of people going to, it, to India, <laughs> you know, like um, being sent to India um, from, by Indian emperors, or sorry, by Roman emperors, um, people being sent to India to specifically find these yogis that everybody was talking about and see if they could get an audience with them and see if they could study them. And then they would come back to Rome and they would report, you know, there are these guys who, you know, go into these states where their hearts stop beating and um, claim to, you know, understand the, the makings of the world. And, um, and you know, was, people were sort of discussing that then and longing for that then. So I, I, I just think the idea of going on a, a holy journey um, is, is something that not all of us, but damn, a whole lot of us <laughs> dream about, you know, at some point. Um, I, I just can't tell you how many people have sort of confessed that to me as though it's some dirty hidden secret when in fact I think it's, um, it's almost like a linkage of longing.